What's happening, beautiful people? Good day, good morning, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our live stream. Today, I want to show you a couple of very interesting articles about Bitcoin, gold, and Ethereum. What is the correlation between gold and Bitcoin? Is the bull uh, market coming to an end soon? This is the question uh, I will try to answer with my very special guest in just a couple of minutes. Is there a correlation between gold and Bitcoin, guys? Coming up. Right, I came across a couple of very interesting articles, guys, uh, talking about the correlation between gold, Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum, okay, and other cryptocurrencies. And I cannot start the chat today without my very special guest, like every other Tuesday, from the heart of London, Neil Wilson, Chief Market Analyst at Markets.com. How are you, Neil? I'm very well, thanks. Yeah, the, the, hair's, the hair's getting longer by, by the day, so I'm looking forward to when the hairdressers reopen. From now on, I'm going to introduce you uh, like this, Neil Wilson, the man that has a different uh, hairstyle every day. <laughs> no. Not by design, though. <laughs> no? Okay. Now, um, we had some uh, very good news from UK. Uh, yesterday, the new budget was announced. And this morning, we saw that the UK and the US have reached a potential agreement on uh, halting the tariffs on uh, whiskey and other products. Is that right? Yeah, that's it. So uh, the budget yesterday was uh, had uh, you know a fair bit of stimulus, and it. it was really a budget where the you know the, the chance is really spending now to help get us through the the, the crisis and continue to offer support to businesses um, among those you know the ones that have been hardest hit, especially. Um, but it does imply sort of tax hikes down the road, so we'll be paying it back um, through higher taxes uh, over the course of the Parliament and beyond. So um, a bit of a mixed bag, but definitely some support in there for the economy, lots of support for the economy um, and more borrowing. So there's going to be about another £50 billion of issuance next year uh, by the government. And I mean, that'll just get hoovered up by the Bank of England. So it's not really a problem for the for the gilts market, but... Uh, it does show that the government is prepared to borrow more uh, than the market had maybe thought. Uh, so we have seen uh, guilt yields just, just push up a touch uh, over the last day. Uh, but of course, that's linked to the bond market, um, the global bond market, really. We've seen treasury, treasuries also uh, uh, sold off and, and the yields move up. Um, and yeah, the, the news uh, on the, on the uh, tariffs is a good one, really. It just shows, you know, um, that now that we're out of the EU, we're able to to move forward uh, ourselves on trade negotiations and, and don't need to uh, worry about what the rest of Europe uh, is demanding. And this was the uh, British dream in the last four years. I uh, reckon this deserves a, a shot, yeah, to celebrate that you don't <laughs> have whiskey anymore. <laughs> now, let's have a quick look at, <laughs> let's have a quick look at what uh, Rishi Sunak uh, highlighted yesterday. Uh, so uh, we see a furlough to be extended until the end of September, he, uh, he said. We see the government uh, to continue paying 80% of employees' wages for, uh, for hours they cannot work, which is really good. Employers to be asked to contribute 10% in July and 20% in August and, uh, and September to support this movement. Also, Rishi Sunak announced uh, support for the self-employed also to be extended until uh, September. And 600,000 more self-employed people will be eligible for uh, help as uh, access to grants is widened. Wow, that's really, really good news. So my next question would be, uh, where does this leave the pound? Because uh, considering what's happening, the the path to, uh, to 149 on the cable should be quite smooth, right? Yeah, I mean, obviously, we've seen a, a pullback um, really off the back of dollar strength, the dollars come come back quite strongly um, and push cable back down below 140 again. I think, uh, you know, I think, um, I still think the pound's going to be moving up. I still think the pound's got the best sort of outlook uh, near term for, for, for growth, I think, just with the, the UK economy bouncing back, hopefully, um, pretty quickly this year. Um, 
you know, you know, you say it's good news that the Chancellor's offering more support, and in, in some ways it is, but equally, you know, we should just all get back to work. I think that would be the best thing for the economy <laughs> is people just to, to get over it and get on with it. Um, now that the, the vaccines are, are kicking in and, and the number of hospitalizations has collapsed already, um, I think it's um, single digit numbers of, in recent weeks uh, in terms of ICU, you know, intensive care among among people aged over 80 so the, and they were the key risk group i think we should just be moving on now i don't think i think they should just open it all up like they're doing in texas and, and get on with it great point but uh, you know the saying better safe than sorry um on the same note the world uh, health organization issued a warning a few days ago that the covid uh, cases around the world are booming again and it's the new strain of uh, of covid apparently it keeps mutating so I agree with you because I'm uh, I'm fed up with this uh, so-called lockdown. But better safe than sorry. We saw what happened with the with the millions of people that got affected by uh, by COVID. Now, looking once again at the chart, um, I see that I have a 200 moving average. I'm looking at it on a on a monthly chart at the cable. Okay, 139.61 as we speak. We see a big big resistance level uh, highlighted by the 200 MA at 148.96 just four basis points below the 149. It's very close. It's very, very close. And uh, we will probably see a retest in, in the next month or so if, uh, if things keep going this way. What do you reckon? Yeah, I mean, I think I think this this is a short term rally for the dollar. I still think the down, you know, the, the longer term trend remains remains lower for the dollar. You think you just may be seeing a bit of this year, you know, the yields picking up. Um, that's creating a bit of uh, pressure, um, but yeah, I think, you know, you probably you got to clear that um, that high, that sort of one forty four, forty five high that I think was uh, from twenty eighteen, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, and that, that's that's uh, obviously going to be a key uh, a key bit of resistance there, that horizontal sort of resistance. I think that's going to be pretty tough resistance to, to crack. Um, but if it goes, then or well, once it goes, then we we start to see it run up towards that one fifty level. Yeah, it's very very close to uh, to the to the one forty nine. There is the one forty five. There is the one forty nine. Right, very close. Now the real reason why I wanted you here today, apart from having a, a date every Monday and Thursday, uh, there's something going on with the crypto market, and I've I've discovered two very very interesting articles uh, earlier on. The first article, okay, has to do with the correlation between uh, Bitcoin and gold. Did you ever come across this this kind of correlation? Did you ever saw it this way, Neil? Yeah, um, I actually wrote wrote about this uh, last year um, uh, for the Investor Chronicle. Um, the uh, the behavior um, of Bitcoin and gold uh, was actually last year was, was correlated actually to more to risk it had quite a close correlation with the s p 500 um and i think yeah it's 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 really this idea of bitcoin acting as a digital gold um and and drawing away some of the the, the traditional demand that you see for gold uh, into bitcoin and so what what we're seeing is really that uh, you're not seeing bitcoin as a as a as a as a currency per se but as a as a as a security a bit like gold a non-yielding uh safe asset that protects you against inflation and it's it seems to be that it's picking up some of that demand particularly among younger investors who uh are, are maybe not going into gold and, and and just uh putting a little bit of their money in bitcoin and it's it's a sense that you know in, in the old days you might have you might have um kept you know two two three four five percent maybe of your assets in gold say uh or, or, or maybe even just half a percent, whatever. Um, whatever that number is, it's different for everyone. Um, you know, Charlie Munger, uh, for example, Berkshire Hathaway doesn't invest in gold ever. So, you know, some people don't. It's, it's, but say you did, say, and a lot of investors clearly have over the years, then what you're seeing is a, a certain percentage of that demand for gold getting um, getting directed into, into Bitcoin. And... Um, you know, there was that research report from uh, JP Morgan a few months back, which um, signaled that, you know, if, if you started to see Bitcoin kind of rival gold, um, you know, one for one, then you could see Bitcoin up to $146,000. That was their estimate of where it could reach if if demand for Bitcoin as a digital gold was similar to gold. Um, and, you know, you have seen that particularly among younger investors. 
Um, so I'm not surprised that that therefore means that the price action starts to behave uh, in the in the same kind of way, and it has a uh, has a uh, an inverse correlation with with uh, with real yields, uh, just as gold does. Right. Yes, makes a lot of sense. Check this out. So we are looking basically at the correlation between the price of Bitcoin and the price of gold from December first, twenty twenty, to the present date. We heard that Bitcoin may be the new digital digital gold and maybe a hedge against inflation of the dollar. Right. This is what uh, they were trying to say. So in this example, we can uh, see that starting December 2020, prices of Bitcoin and gold do appear to correlate in a bullish movement. And then by mid January, we see both Bitcoin and gold starting to uh, correlate in a bearish fashion with a bit of a pullback. By February 3rd and 4th, Bitcoin gives strong bullish uh, buying signals while gold sets up for a short entry, which eliminates the correlation. This is what uh, what confused me and many, many other other people, because currently gold looks like uh, it's trying to bottom out and, and ready for a short term rally. Why Bitcoin, after its most recent pullback, is looking to rally higher from here, potentially. What do you think about this? Does it make sense or is it just a coincidence? Yeah, no, I think I think when you. You know, you're not necessarily going to see every movement track the same. I think you know the correlation is is more one of a from a kind of longer term thesis around the investment, uh, uh, the investment sort of ideas for whether or not you should be investing in Bitcoin or gold. It's, it's more around that, I would say. Um, I'm not surprised mm -hmm. that the correlation uh, you do see price correlation, price action correlation, just because of um, I think you get big moves in in real yields, and that does. Uh, affect the market both markets i think also um you know it's a liquidity thing uh, in as much as we saw them both sell off last year um as liquidity was pulled from the system because of the crisis and uh, we saw broad sell off um and then they both they both rallied as as central banks injected a lot more liquidity into the system so i think there's a big liquidity play there um and i think the problem perhaps for Bitcoin might be um, that, uh, you know, if, re if, if yields are, if yields do firm up, then um, my my view is probably that the, the appeal of Bitcoin diminishes just because you get uh, a return on, on safe haven investments like US Treasury bonds. Um, that said, though, the reason yields are moving up is because inflation expectations are really starting to shoot higher. And we've seen the five year break evens in the US go above 250 basis points. Um, I think the highest in about 13 years. So that movement in inflation does um, support the, 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 uh, the, the appeal of Bitcoin. So it depends, depends why things are moving as much as what is moving. Which takes me to the second very very interesting article which i uh, which i found today check this out bitcoin and ethereum slow down as transaction values and fees plunge and this was basically what i wanted to talk about today so let's have a quick uh, quick look at uh, at the article so everyone understands and then we're going to go into it so on chain metrics for both cryptocurrencies uh, show the a marked decrease in the dollar value of transactions and the subsequent transaction fees yeah bitcoin and uh, ethereum appear to be experiencing something of a slowdown as on chain data shows a dramatic decrease in the us dollar value of coins being sent across both blockchains in the past week at the same time transaction fees for both chains have uh, receded from recent highs or in Ethereum's case, an all-time high. Okay, now data from uh, Bitin uh, four chats, four charts shows uh, forty-six point sixty-eight billion worth of Bitcoin was sent across the Bitcoin blockchain on February twenty-five. For some context, that's around five percent of the total Bitcoin market cap, which uh, currently stands at nine hundred and twenty-five billion. Three days later, on February twenty-eight. The US dollar value of Bitcoin being uh, sent had fallen to 1538 billion, a 66 drop off. And in the same time, the average transaction fee for Bitcoin uh, users fell by 53% uh, from 3147 to 1463. Yeah. So the highest average fees ever recorded for Bitcoin came in December 2017 when uh, Bitcoin fees exceeded $55 marking the end of um, coins uh, bull run for that period. There is a similarity 
to, to what is happening now. What's your take on it? I mean, and we, we see many times that the same address, yeah, we saw an article last week that a huge amount of Bitcoins was, um, was transferred from the same address in December and then again the same address in February. What is this? Because I'm I'm trying to understand. Is the market calming down? Is it is it melting? Well, I think I mean I think it's it's definitely um, got a, a new level of maturity in terms of the, um, the institutional activity that's going on there. Um, I think there's obviously a lot of um, kind of things that go on in the darkness, if you like, in the exactly. shadows of Bitcoin that. that that I certainly um, am not privy to. I don't. I don't know all, all those ins and outs. Um, you know, and I, I, it's hard to know exactly what's going on. And that that sort of goes into the point of why I think it's a risky place to be and why it's a, a manipulated market. And I, I, I'm not convinced that what we see on the surface uh, is is all is all legitimate and 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 you know clear cut. So. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's always tough to know what's, gonna, what's happening it's with Bitcoin. Volume, basically. And, and such a sizable slowdown in activity on both blockchains could be interpreted by some as a sign that the current bull run is grinding to a halt. Yeah, I mean, I think activity um, plays, in, obviously, the activity levels plays into the price uh, with potential future price action. So um, there's maybe just a bit of buzz come out of the market. I'm not sure. Um, we, we've certainly, you know, there's a lot of buzz at the start of the year um, with clients at markets.com uh, and and, uh, and it's not quite there anymore. Um, uh, maybe it's just because the meme stocks have, have taken over and they're, they're the next big thing. And so everyone's trading that instead. Well, GameStop once again. Yeah. <laughs> right now um what else is going on what else is going on um right tomorrow nfp nfp i, I promise we're going to talk about uh, nfp earlier on we had the uh, initial jobless claims coming out in green at uh, 745,000 still below the 750,000 uh, expected tomorrow is the nfp day the adp numbers yesterday showed 117k versus 177 expected 182,000 jobs are expected by consensus tomorrow versus 49,000 uh, last month. What's your view on it? Just uh, a shake off on the dollar or the downtrend continues, Neil? Uh, well, I think um, I think now we've got the, um, we sort of know where the Fed is on jobs. So we know that the Fed is not going to take its foot off the gas um, just because the economy is heating up. We know that they want the jobs market to uh, recover. So the, the implication that a really strong jobs number could force the Fed to um, uh, tighten conditions a bit sooner than the market previously thought, I think, is now not really a problem. It's not really the case. Um, we know we know sort of where the Fed is, and I don't think it's it's in a position where, with 10 million jobs lost since the pandemic started, that um, a really strong print is going to necessarily do much. Had that said, though, I think if you get um, you get a good strong print then it does suggest the US economy is doing a bit better and that does suggest um that maybe there could be some dollar strength but if, if the economy is picking up whilst stimulus is still there whilst the fed's anchoring um the short end of the curve then you know you start to think about inflation and you also start if you see the fed and we've got j Powell speaking today um potentially trying to lean on the long end of the curve, then that could force up inflation even further. So you could get a situation where you start to see this kind of uh, uh, unanchoring of, of ex inflation expectations, which I think we're already seeing, and a strong jobs number uh, would support that. If you get a weak number, then you probably think, um, you know, it's just the case that the economy just needs a little bit more help and, it, uh, you know, it's not really going to uh, massively affect the market, I don't think. You know what's interesting? Now, we're going to have uh, Jerome Powell uh, speaking tonight, but they um, they all want a cheap dollar. And the events that happen in, uh, in the U.S. because they have a heavy winter, the events that happened in the U.S. last month, I don't know if we're going to see big growth. Yeah, big uh, job growth this month.
purely because Texas was frozen for weeks. And, and we had many areas in the States that uh, faced a lot of issues. Obviously, people were left out of work, out of uh, uh, electricity. So all this, I think, will add up to to the job to the data numbers that we to the job numbers that we're going to see tomorrow sorry <laughs> i'm getting confused so i don't know too much about uh, a strong dollar but once again we're going to see we're going to see what uh, what's going to happen right neil thank you so much for today it's a short one today because um we're very close thank to you. the us market and i want to go to the bitcoin and uh, I'll talk to you on Monday. Yeah, let's see how uh, the NFP will affect the dollar tomorrow. Yeah, what's the direction? And Monday we're gonna get a new uh, new direction of the market. Okay, great. Sweet. Thank you for your time today. I'll see you on Monday. Take care.